Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial for the button band of the Bebe Suessa. The button band will sit on the left shoulder and at first you'll pick up stitches and you'll work the entire button band in double knitting and finish everything off with a tubular bind off. Then we'll pick up stitches on the short side and join them into the yoke to join everything in the round. And I have shown everything in this tutorial on this brown example here. First up, you will cast on the required amount of stitches and then you'll place two stitch markers. The first one that you'll place is the salvage stitch and the salvage stitch is always knitted throughout the entire time. And second up, you will place the mid back marker and that will be the mid back once everything is joined in the round. Okay, so I have worked up until the point now where I can attach the button band. I have done my folded neck band and I have worked all the short rows and increases as instructed in the pattern. And note that I have finished on a wrong side row. This is my salvage stitch, which has been knitted throughout the entire time. And as you can see here, this little edge likes to curl around now. So to make it easier for me to pick up the stitches, I will pin it down on a blocking mat and steam the garment. Make sure that you are steaming it from far away and leave it to cool down in between. And there you are, the edge stays in place now. The tools that you will need to pick up the button band are the same size needle that you've used for your folded neckband. For me, that's a two millimeter circular, scissors and a crochet hook. I find works really well here. First, we're going to cut the working yarn from where we've left off. And now we'll pick up stitches in direction from the live stitches towards the folded neckband. Once we're at the folded neckband, we will pick up stitches through both layers of fabric, hence why the crochet hook. For every yoke row, you'll pick up around two stitches. The pattern instructs you what to do exactly. And once we're at the neckband, we will pick up one stitch per neckband stitch and we'll go up right to the top to make sure everything is flush at the end. So this is the salvage stitch row. We have knits and pearls, and these are the live stitches still on the wire from the yoke. And that's the first row I need to go in to pick up. So the first stitch I go in to pick up is a pearl stitch. And now remember, we need to pick up two stitches for every one row of yoke. So we're going to go into the middle and attach the new yarn, pull through, and now we're going to find a different little loop of this pearl stitch to go back into. If you go into the same hole twice, the stitch that you've just picked up will unravel and you won't be able to pick up two. It is a bit tricky. There we go. Two stitches picked up. And I will popping them onto the two millimeter circular needle and pull the yarn tight so that you have the right tension later on. Next one's a knit stitch. You see there's two legs and you go in underneath those two legs of the knit stitch to pick up the first one. And then we'll go in between these two legs to pick up the second stitch. I'll show you again in a second. and onto the two millimeter and pull in tight again. Next one, we're going to pick up again from a purl stitch. So go into the middle of that purl stitch with your crochet hook, loop the yarn around and pick up that first stitch. And then you're going to go into a different area of that purl stitch. I'll pick this one up here. And this can be a little bit tricky. And you pick up the yarn again. And that's how you created two more stitches. And onto the two millimeter again, and make sure to pull tight to have the right tension. So this is another knit stitch. These two legs have an in-between part. That's the two legs, and that's below the two legs. So that's where you're gonna go in first to pick up the first stitch pull through and now you're going to go in between those two legs to pick up your second stitch. So now we've picked up all the stitches on the yoke 
and we're going to go on to the neck band. And here we'll pick up for every neck band stitch, we'll pick up one stitch and right up to the top. And we'll go through both layers of fabric from the folded edge that we have created. So this is the first stitch I'll go into here and this is a little bit fiddly. And don't be afraid to unravel and just try again. This has to look good. It's on quite a visible part of the jumper. And there we go, picked up. And now I'm going to show you how far up until the folded neckband I go. So it's literally right at the top point of the folded neckband where I'll go in to pick up my very last stitch. As you can see here, it looks actually like I've picked up too many, but because this is double knitting, it will all lie flush in the end. And there we go, here are all the stitches picked up for the button band. Next, we will work three setup rows. This is what everything looks like from the wrong side, which is where we will begin. And this is a little modification on the double knitting that you'll do later. So the first stitch is slipped purlwise with the yarn in front. And then you will knit the next one through the back loop because as we've put the stitches on, they were twisted. And to untwist them, we can knit them through the back loop. So the next stitch is slipped purlwise with the yarn in front again, and then knit the next one through the back loop. And you'll continue like this for the entire row. Now we're going to go on to row number two, which is the right side. So because we've always slipped one stitch, there'll always still be these stitches that we've slipped that are twisted. So to untwist them, we knit those through the back loop again for that second row. The third and last setup row is worked on the wrong side again, and that's a normal double knitting row. Next up, we will work the buttonholes by working a certain amount of stitches on their own, and I call them segments. So we have a different amount of segments per size. This is the first segment we will work. So it's before the first buttonhole, then the second segment, the third one, and the fourth one. The amount of segments depends on the size you're knitting. And what it means is we will work a set amount of stitches for five rows on their own while the other stitches of the button band rest on the needle. So you work the first segment, break the yarn, rejoin the yarn for the second one, break the yarn, rejoin the yarn for the third segment, break the yarn at the end and then rejoin it for the fourth segment. And because you're not knitting every stitch continuously, you're breaking the yarn, you're creating these gaps and that'll become our buttonholes. Once you've done the fourth segment, you will rejoin everything again by knitting across all the stitches. And that's creating this edge here so that we can work our bind off. The first segment is worked closest to the life stitches from the yoke. You will begin on a right side row and you will just continue knitting in the established double knitting pattern. The amount of stitches that you need to work for the first segment depends on the size and it's all instructed in the pattern. So this is my last stitch of this segment. These are all the stitches that I have worked. And now the other stitches will rest on the left needle. I'll turn my work around and begin the second row of this first segment. Second rows worked on the wrong side and again continue in the double knitting pattern. And that's my last stitch here. And that's the second row done. You turn the work around to begin working on the third row. And you will just continue until all of the rows for this one segment have been worked. This is what it looks like once the first segment has been worked. 
and now I will go on to break the yarn and rejoin it for the second segment. Again, you knit in double knitting pattern and you knit the amount of stitches that the pattern tells you for that second segment. And all of the segments are worked in exactly this same way. So here are all the segments finished and there you can see the gaps that we have created now for the buttonholes. And that's happened because we broke the yarn and rejoined it for the next segment. Now we're going to knit across all of these segments to join them. And that's just a little glimpse of the back of it. There's a lot of weaving in. <laughs> okay, now we're going to work three rows in double knitting across all of the stitches again, and that will join them back together. This is the last stitch of that last segment to show you how to work that gap. And you just continue in the double knitting pattern and make sure to pull all the yarns tight, the loose ends tight, and that will create a beautiful looking gap like we see here. Next, you're going to work a tubular bind off and there's plenty of great tutorials out there. Just make sure that you pick one that's working flat because you're not working the round here. And that is the finished button band from the front and the back. What I particularly like is that the pickup edge looks fairly straight and the tubular bind off looks continuous and you see on that side everything looks flush with the edge of the neckband just like you'd want it. Unfortunately there is a ton of ends to weave in now. <laughs> okay next up we're going to integrate that button band we've created into the yoke. We're going to pick up stitches along that short edge of the button band and knit them together with stitches on the left needle of the live stitches that we have kept on hold. So we're going to overlap it as such once we picked up some stitches and then you're going to have that opening where you're going to put on your buttons and it's going to lay like this. Personally, I find it easier again to use a crochet hook to pick up the stitches and then you're going to need a single double pointed needle in the same size of your yoke large circular needle. For me, that's a four millimeter. Now you can remove your salvage stitch marker. We won't need that anymore. And you begin picking up stitches on the button band. Mind you, use the short tail of the new skein of yarn here. I just switched to a different hook because that was a bit easier and then pop it onto your double pointed four millimeter needle. Pick up as many stitches as the pattern says. Then you're gonna overlay the left circular needle and the double pointed and knit the stitches on those needles together as shown in order to overlap them and integrate the button band into the yoke. So you're going to go into the first stitch on the double pointed needle knitwise onto the first one on the circular needle and knit them together and then pop them both off the needles. And that's how you're knitting the button band together with the existing yoke stitches and integrated into the yoke. And now that's all stitches of the double pointed needle knitted together with stitches of the yoke. And once you go around and come back to the button band the first round after joining in, you will join the entire work in the round and continue knitting in the round from there on. Everything looks a bit loose, so pulling everything tight in the end will be um, important to make sure you have the right tension everywhere. But here is another closer look at how I've joined everything. And there we are, the button band is finished and integrated into the yoke. I really hope that this tutorial helped you together with the instructions in the pattern to create the prettiest button band that you possibly can. Um, just to reiterate here, it does sit on the left side of the shoulder. This is your front, this is your back. New beginning of the round is that mid back marker, the wee little ghost here. And the button band faces towards the back of the person wearing it. 
Like I said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial, that it helped you. If not, get in touch with the support email and I'll do my best to help you guys. But I'll see you next time.